This video is a part of a series that helps dinghy sailors onto the path to becoming bareboat charter skippers. The entire series is contained in this playlist here. If you have any comments or feedback for us, please share them and help make the next video that much better. Enjoy! Click into the um, boat systems section of this presentation. The, one of the main differences between sailing a dinghy and going into uh, you know, a big cruising boat is now you have systems. Uh, well, it, it's like you know you have a water system, you have the engine, you have you know electrical system, you have chart plotters, you have you know you might have air conditioning, you might have a generator. It's all these things uh, that you have on the boat that you're just not used to to dealing with on a on a sonar. One of the things that's the description that somebody once gave me uh, in a modern cruising boat, you have all the systems you have in your house. You have your plumbing, your heating, maybe your air conditioning, your electricity, everything you have in your house. You do two things: you take that, you shrink it down. Then you put it in a small box in a frozen environment, you turn it on its side and you shake it vigorously and you expect it all still to work. And largely it does, but not without some TLC. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, so I mean, this is just a sort of a list of different kinds of systems. Yeah, we already talked about the dinghy. Um, the boat will have winches. Um, we have winches on the sonars. Um, some of your boats will have power winches. Um, so you want to be familiar with those and you want to be able to teach your crew to be very careful around the power winches. They're very handy. They're mostly fine, but if you do something stupid, they can really hurt. So you got to pay attention uh, to how to use the power winches. Uh, the boats will have maybe rope clutches, which is something we don't have here. Um, you, know, you have to open and close to you know to let a let a line go, like the main halyard or something like that. Uh, reefing we already talked about a little bit. Um, every boat's a little bit different with the reefing systems. Um, I've never seen a reefing system that's absolutely perfect. Um, they can jam, they can get stuck, uh, so you'll want to know how it works and yeah, how to unstick it when it gets stuck. Um, so practice it, you know, uh, you know, if you have time the first day when you're going out, put the reef in, take it out, even if it's not windy. Um, furling system, you know, how your, how your man goes up and down and the roll of furler on the jib. Um, ah, marine heads. <laughs> Pay attention to this in your boat briefing. Ask them about the marine head. Even if you look at it and you're thinking, oh, I've seen that before, ask them about it. It might be a little bit different, and you don't want to get it wrong, because that's bad. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, the one thing I will say, it's a little bit, you know, I tend to be a little bit cavalier with this, but most people will tell you never put toilet paper in the marine head. You always have like a little trash bag, you know, hopefully one that seals. Uh, next to it for your toilet paper because toilet paper is what leads to clogs. Now they'll have special marine toilet paper, it will probably be okay, but it's up to your level of risk tolerance for uh, head clogs, which should be very, very low in my <laughs> uh, thing there. So, uh, oh yeah, propane, you know, propane for your stove. Um, down below you in the galley you usually have a stove and want to um, check out how that propane system works. It usually has a switch, a solenoid switch that you have to turn on. Um, you know, but usually what happens is the propane tanks out in the back of the boat, there's probably just, you know, like on your grill, a little screw top on top of that. Sometimes that'll be closed, sometimes it'll be open. Um, you know, the safest thing to do is keep that closed except when you're using the galley. So you're gonna go and open that, and then there'll be another switch. It could be anywhere, it could be in the galley, it actually could be at the nav table. There's a propane solenoid, which is another valve that you have to open before your stove will light. So ask them about that at the briefing. Um, you might have a, usually most of the boats have had, have had a charcoal grill in the back, so you'll want to check, make sure, oh, you know, when you're checking the boat out, find out, is it a propane grill or is it a charcoal grill? If it's a charcoal grill, you'll need to go and buy charcoal. And something to light it with. Uh, I'm not going to go into too great detail, but just, you know, there are systems and you're going to have to pay attention to them. These are the systems that are going to be sort of more relevant specifically to the skipper um, battery. Um, you have a set of big marine batteries somewhere. Usually you have a separate engine battery and another set of battery that runs, you know, the so-called house battery that runs your lights and everything else that you have in the boat. Uh, so you want to make sure that those stay charged and don't get too low. Um, so you'll see on the panel, they'll be, I mean, you want to keep those above 12 volts all the time. Uh, so you'll have to, you know, turn on and off switches to make sure you're not using too much power. Uh, in the evening before you go to bed, you might want to just look at it and see what 
your power level's at, and you might want to run the engine for half an hour to charge the batteries uh, so you make it through the night without uh, going too low. Um, electrical panels, different skippers have different rules. When I'm on the skipper on a boat, I'll tell people, don't touch anything on the electrical panel unless you're absolutely sure of what it does. And when you do, tell somebody about it. Other skippers will say, don't touch anything on the electrical panel, period. Just if you need something on the electrical panel, ask me, I'll take care of it. Um, because there are mistakes you can make on that panel that will have an impact. So you want to make sure that your crew understands what you want with that. Uh, and even if you let them change it, make sure they tell you or someone else whenever they're changing something so that everybody knows what's going on. Water, I mean, you have a water system. They have water tanks, uh, usually three of them on the bigger cruising boats. Uh, you fill them up, make sure they're filled when you start there. Uh, this is not drinking water. I mean, maybe in an emergency, but I wouldn't drink it. Um, but, you know, for your sinks, hand washing, showers, usually you'll have, you know, in your head you'll have a sink uh, and a shower. You might have two or three heads on the boat, depending on how big it is. Uh, in the galley you'll have a sink, you can wash dishes with it. And usually on the back deck, there'll be uh, a shower there for, you know, you go for a swim, come back in, hose off the salt. Um, you just want to tell people to be careful with water. You have a limited amount of water. Uh, if everybody takes a 15 minute shower every day, you're going to run out real quick. So keep an eye on that. Um, bilge pumps, you want to make sure those are working. Um, and all these other instruments on the engines and, and the VHF radio, you want to do a radio check. Um, again, this is all going to be in your boat briefing on that day. And take the time to ask a lot of questions about it from your boat briefer uh, so that you know what's going on how they work. You want to want to know with, with your instruments, your wind instruments, your, 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 your chart plotter, when you get there, might not be in English. <laughs> if it's not, you can try to figure it out or you can ask somebody at the charter company to help you figure out how to switch it into your preferred language. Um, same thing, make sure you know what uh, it's set to. Is it set to feet, meters, fathoms, for, or something else? Um, so you make sure you know, and make sure you know what your charts are set to and what's in your chart plotter so that you know what the depths are. So the TJ alluded to, if something big breaks in the boat, don't try to fix it. It's not worth your time, you're on vacation. You have the cell phone, call the company, they'll fix it. Um, well, as I said, you have the phone, make sure it stays charged. They give you a phone. They give you a phone. It's just a little, it's not a smartphone, it's just a little phone. You know, it's usually like one of those little candy bars. Actually, most of them are yeah, maybe a hair bigger than this clicker here. Uh, and they will, have the, they will have the charter company number plugged into it. They might have one or two other numbers plugged into it. There'll be some minutes on it. They say, you know, the, the, they say that you, know, you can use to call the charter company. If you want to call other people, you can, but you'll need to add minutes to do that. Some of them are locked down to just a few numbers. Other times they say, it's like, well, we gave you a phone with 10 minutes on it. That's enough for talking to us. If you need more, go to a store and buy more. Any questions about boat systems? Anybody have, if you've been on a boat, you had experience with some system going, working as it should or not? How do you sort of adjust from boat to boat because you haven't seen any system That's what the boat breaking is for. Ask a lot of questions. Uh, usually that first night when people are out relaxing, whatever, I'm the skipper, I'll spend half an hour, an hour just poking around the boat, trying to figure out where everything is and how it works. Now, I mean, you get used to them. I mean, they're, the general principles are the same because you just organize them a little differently. So, but yeah. So maybe you're about to cover this in provision, but do you don't drink the water out of the fresh water tanks? I wouldn't. You, I mean, you can ask the charter company, they'll tell you. I mean, it is possible to maintain water tanks such that you have drinkable water out of them. They have to be cleaned regularly, probably have a filter on them. If you have your own boat and you know who's taking care of the water tanks, by all means, drink out of the tanks. Yeah, he's it's a charter boat. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Did I? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe in a pinch it's water, but, you know, I wouldn't, never have. So they don't generally have a separate gray water or like gray water system and I'm talking about the water system here. I'm talking about just basically fresh water from the tanks. Right. Uh, drainage, yeah. The, the heads will have holding tanks. Yeah. Um, so that will, 
Maybe have well, I, the most I've had have always had holding tanks, whether people use them or not. You know, it's not like you're around here. You don't get pumped out. I only use the holding tanks, and like you know, you go into an anchorage with a whole bunch of other boats. You don't want to just necessarily dump everything. I don't. I don't necessarily trust that everybody else feels the same way. But we close them in the anchorage, and then when we go out in the cha- sail, sail the next day, just open them and dump them out in the middle of the, the uh, of open ocean as much as possible. Yeah. When uh, when using those freshwater tanks, could you use them? Or cooking, if you boil it, then maybe sanitize it a little bit, or would you boil what is that? Probably. I mean, probably. It might taste a little funny. I, again, I don't usually use it for that. Okay. We okay. usually just buy, you know, those two, you just buy a bunch of those two and a half gallon jugs of, of, of water. Um, you could use it. Um, I will wash dishes in it. Some people will wash dishes in it and then give them a rinse in drinking water. So they don't have the three mile rule there? Here's there may be rules, and then the there's what everybody mile. does. Yes, there, there, there are those rules. A lot of times you won't necessarily be going that far off. Um, I try to you know, respect it as much as possible. You don't want to be dumping uh, sewage where you're not supposed to, but you know, the tank's only so big. Ask the charter company what the rules are, and they will, in fact, we've been told, why would you use the holding tanks? Yeah. On, you know, even in the anchorages, they're like, we never use them. So, Ask them what they suggest you do, and then be a little more courteous than that, please. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I always try to dump it out as far as I can. Uh, that's not necessarily always going three miles out. I mean, it's... So all the fuel locks don't come with a courtesy pump There's out. no pump out. Yeah. I've never seen pump out in any of these places. It's amazing how much sailors like to talk about poo. <laughs> <laughs> important when you're on a cruising boat. It's, 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 it's on the other side of the wall from your bedroom. Yeah. You know, kind of yeah. <laughs> any more, any other, any other poo talk here before we move on? Hello again. Thank you for watching this video. If you've appreciated this content, please let us know with a thumbs up or down in the comments so that we're encouraged to make our next presentation into a video as well. These take us a little bit of production time we had to convince some of our friends to help out, borrow some gear and rent some other gear. But if you guys find it useful, we'll, make, we'll take the time and make our next presentation into a video as well. Oh, speaking of, if you're looking for the next video in the series, it's right here. Thank you, Seagull. This is the awkward pause. I don't know what else to say. Go to the next video. Hurry up and click. It's getting weird. <laughs>